Hey everyone, I bought this 14 inch version of the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 about 3 weeks ago and it took me a little longer to publish my thoughts and that's because I wanted to see whether a color deficient screen is something that I can live with or not. I knew what I was getting into but at only 600 euros over here for a Ryzen 5 configuration with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD storage, this was a good deal that could have retired my aging XPS 13 as my travel and light work notebook. That screen ended up at only 55% sRGB in our tests, but otherwise bright and fairly punchy, so I gave it a chance. Three weeks later though, I decided this notebook is not for me, and that's despite the fact that aside from the color deficient display, it's an amazing value computer. We'll get in depth in this video, but first, please take a moment to hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, it makes a huge difference for our small channel. Okay, first off, I like this minimal and clean design language Lenovo implement with most of their notebooks these days. Branding is kept at a minimum, with two small metal Lenovo plaques on the lid and on the interior, and no logo under the screen, and the whole thing looks and feels like a higher tier product. Sure, the interior is still plastic, but with this slightly textured surface that feels soft and reliable, and does a very good job at concealing smudges and finger oil. In fact, I much prefer this plastic interior to the metal on the lid, for two reasons. The lid shows smudges easier, and has somehow already dented in two small spots on this unit, revealing the bare aluminum underneath. I'm not sure how this happened, I take very good care of my products and this sort of sensible surface is not something I can accept. As far as I can tell, Lenovo also offered this laptop with a plastic lid in some regions, and if that's the same kind of finishing as on the interior of my unit, I definitely prefer it to this metal lid. Something to look into. Materials aside, this idea pad is sturdily made, with both a strong main chassis and a strong screen. It's also fairly compact for its class, with narrow bezels around the display, but enough of a forehead to include a camera at the top with a physical shutter. The quality isn't much, as expected. This notebook is, however, a tad heavier and thicker than the more premium 14-inch options, but at 19mm in thickness and 1.4 kilos in weight, it's still a portable choice if you plan to grab it along every day to school or to work. The power brick and cables account for an extra 0.33 kilos. Having used this daily, in the last weeks, two aspects bothered me. One is the fact that Lenovo included an always-on LED next to the power button. It's not very bright, but it's still unnecessary and annoying when watching a movie at night. My other need is with the limited screen angle and fairly stiff hinge. You'll need both hands to lift up the display here, and it only goes back to about 145 degrees and not all the way flat, as I'd want on a portable laptop that won't always be used on a desk. On the other hand, Lenovo implemented grippy rubber feet on the bottom, made sure to blunt the front lip and corners, lined a fair selection of ports on the sides and included up-firing speakers that flank the keyboard. The audio gets fairly punchy and does not distort or vibrate at high levels, but the quality is average at best. Furthermore, Lenovo also implemented a capable cooling system on this notebook with a large intake grill on the bottom and the exhaust hidden beneath the hinge, and a competent internal thermal module. We'll talk about them in a bit. As for that I.O., you'll get two USB-A slots and an SD card reader on the right side, and the status LEDs, a USB-C port, HDMI and a power plug on the left. The USB-C port also supports charging and display port, driving a 4K 60Hz monitor just fine. Some 14-inch IdeaPad versions do not include the barrel plug port and instead ship with an USB-C charger. But keep in mind that you'll have a hard time powering a high-resolution external monitor on those variants while also charging up the laptop, so overall this is a more practical model. Finally, I should also add that you're getting a fairly slow SD card reader here and fairly slow Gen 1 USB-A ports as well, but they're fine in this price class. The IdeaPad 5 gets a standard Lenovo keyboard, the same we've seen on past Yogas and IdeaPads, just with slightly cheaper feeling plastic keycaps than on the higher tier models. No worries though, this is a good typer, quick, quiet and accurate once you get a hold of its marshier feedback, the kind you should expect from a portable laptop with short stroke keys. The layout is standard and includes page up, page down, home and end functionality as secondary is bound to the arrows keys. The entire set of keys is also easy to tell apart with the white writing on a grey background and backlit. It's not a flawless illumination system with fairly dim LEDs and light creeping from underneath some of the keycaps, but at least they're uniform and Lenovo also included caps lock and num lock indicators. The clickpad is plastic, averagely sized and rather flimsy, rattling with taps. It tracks well though, handles all the standard gestures and implements decent clicks, although a bit clunky for my liking. As for biometrics, there aren't any on this laptop. Back to that screen and the reason I decided to return my IdeaPad 5. Color coverage is the problem at 54% sRGB in our tests, and I could easily notice the orange tinted reds and the skewed greens and yellows from the moment I powered this for the first time. However, keep in mind that I'm used to higher quality screens. 
My old XPS laptop gets a 100% sRGB panel and my PC monitors are both 100% plus sRGB as well and that made the transition to this idea pad a lot more difficult. If however you're not as pretentious or you're coming from an older laptop with perhaps a TN panel or an older PC screen, chances are you're not going to find these colors that much of an issue and in that case this should do. For what is worth, here's how this panel fares against the 100% sRGB screen on this Zenbook that I have around as well as the 100 plus sRGB screen on the MacBook Pro 13. Of course, those are more expensive products, I'm just trying to illustrate the difference between these panels and the kind of colors you should expect on the idea pad. Ok, so if you decide that you can live with those colors, this is not otherwise a bad display, with 350 plus nits of brightness, 1300 to 1 contrast, decent blacks and ok viewing angles. It also came well calibrated out of the box and I haven't noticed obvious luminosity issues or light bleeding. With this out of the way, time to talk specs and numbers now. Our test model is a mid-spec configuration of the 14-inch Lenovo IdeaPad 5 with an AMD Ryzen 5 processor, 16GB of DDR4 memory, a fairly fast 512GB Samsung SSD and Radeon Vega 6 graphics. The Ryzen 5 4500U is a 6-core and 6-thread processor with a TDP of 15W but able to run at higher power and clocks here. Lenovo also offers the Ryzen 7 4700U processor here which is an 8-core and 8-thread variant. Our configuration shipped with 16GB of memory out of the box in dual channel and a Samsung PM991 SSD, plenty fast for everyday use. There's actually room for two SSDs inside, with the included one being a compact 2230mm drive, which leaves the full-size 2280 M.2 slot open for upgrade. You can also update the Wi-Fi module, but everything else is soldered on the motherboard. There's also a fairly large 57Wh battery on this laptop, which provides 5-6 to six hours of real-life multitasking, and 9 to 10 hours of video on a charge. My unit came with a standard barrel plug charger, but USB charging is also supported, and an USB C charger is bundled by default in some regions. As far as the software goes, everything can be controlled through the Lenovo Vantage app, which offers access to the power profiles, audio settings, system updates, battery options, and others. There are three performance profiles to choose from here. I've kept my unit on intelligent cooling most of the time, and only switched to extreme performance for benchmarks and some light games. The laptop can easily handle daily browsing, text editing, content streaming and this sort of everyday tasks. The fan rests completely quiet with light use and rarely kicks in with heavier multitasking. As far as the performance in demanding chores go, the Ryzen 5 APU runs a 25 plus watt of power on the extreme performance profile in sustained loads, simulated with our Cinebench loop test. The fan rests quietly, barely audible, but the CPU heats up to temperatures above 90 degrees Celsius. Switching over to the intelligent cooling mode limits the CPU at around 19 Watt and much cooler temperatures in the 74 to 75 Watt degrees Celsius with a roughly 7 to 10% loss of sustained performance and a greater difference in shorter duration loads. To put these results in perspective, here's how a couple of other AMD and Intel Ultra Portable notebooks score in this same test. We also ran the combined CPU and GPU 3D Mark stress test on this notebook, which it passed flawlessly. And that means that the performance does not degrade in time once the components heat up. For more benchmark results and detailed tests, head over to the written article on the side, it's the first link in the description. Finally, we played a couple of games on the Extreme Performance Profile and don't forget that this runs entirely on the Radeon Vega 6 iGPU. Older or casual titles such as Bioshock, Minecraft or Fortnite run or write at Full HD resolution and low graphic settings, but this laptop struggles with the more recent AAA games and you have to lower the resolution to 900p or 720p for constant 30 plus frame rates. This is otherwise a proper implementation of the Ryzen 5 and Vega 6 hardware. The GPU runs at full 1.5 GHz speeds in all our tests and games, but I noticed a fair bit of CPU fluctuations. They don't translate into noticeable stuttering, but might have an impact on 1% lows in certain CPU heavier titles. The hardware also runs fairly hot in the more demanding games such as Far Cry 5. In this case, the APU stabilizes at 25 Watt of power and temperatures in the high 80s, but Witcher 3 and Shadow of Mordor run at lower power and thus lower temperatures. Lenovo went with a slightly more complex thermal model than what's normally implemented at this level, with a dual heat pipe and one large fan. As shown before, this allows the APU to run smoothly at 25 plus watts in demanding loads and games, while at the same time providing passive cooling with daily use, keeping the fan inactive most of the time, with only warm exterior temperatures. The APU does heat up to 80 and 90 degrees in demanding chores in games, and a fair bit of the heat also spreads onto the exterior. We recorded temperatures in the mid 40s in the middle of the keyboard, on top of the AMD processor, and mid 50s around the radiator, but also 60 plus on the underside around the thermal module. 
Furthermore, hot air is also blown into the screen with a panel reaching 40 to 45 degrees around the exhaust. At the same time, the fan spins at around 39 to 41 dB in this case, which is fairly quiet. However, these temperatures are recorded in Far Cry 5 and the laptop is going to run cooler with less demanding games. Ok, let's draw the line on this product here, but first quickly touch on the pricing. This 14-inch IdeaPad 5 is available around the world with the mid-level Ryzen 5 models going for roughly £600 in the UK, €700 Euros in Germany and about $750 US dollars in the US. There are also more affordable Ryzen 3 models, but I'd stay away from those as they ship with only 4GB of RAM and a crappier TN screen. Should however look for occasional sales. For what is worth, I got my version with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD storage for around €600. Euros, a fair bit cheaper than the MSRP price, which is one of the reasons I went for it in the first place. Ok, so for the most part this idea pad feels and performs like a much more expensive product. It's a very quick little laptop and also quiet and comfortable with daily use. It's also made well with the exception of that sensible metal lid, types well and includes the I.O. that I'd need while on the go. However, I also edit photos and videos on my travel laptop and that's one more reason why this washed out 50% sRGB screen won't cut it for me and why this laptop is going back. I understand that Lenovo had to cut some corners to meet the lower price point and still end up profitable, but the screen is just too important for me to skimp on. Still, even if I'm returning my unit, if you're fine with this sort of a screen and you can find a laptop for a good deal, then by all means, go for it. There are some nicer AMD based laptops out there and some of them with better screens, but most of them are also more expensive and it's up to you whether you're willing to pay that premium or not. With that in mind, we're going to wrap this up here, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this idea pad 5. Was I too harsh on the screen quality? What do you think? Let's chat down below and before you go, if you're still here at this point, thank you for watching and please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more laptop reviews. Catch you in the next one.